Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Wanted to get on here today and I just have a little chatty video about my recent eye surgery. I have mentioned this in a, in a couple of videos um, prior to this and I had y'all ask some questions. I'm gonna answer y'all's questions and just kind of chat about what it was like, tell y'all what I had done. Um, I always knew this day would come. If you went back and watched my intro video, I always planned on having surgery and I always planned on sharing it with y'all. It's why I started my channel. I started my channel because of laser. And then I knew I was gonna have a bunch of procedures done. I actually have less done than I thought I would. But nevertheless, I have been planning this since my early 20s. And I will tell you why. And this is not a humble brag. This is just um, what I was experiencing. People were saying, you do not need to get your eyes done because I could do my makeup. Like you probably can't tell I had a lot done because I used to do my eyeshadow exactly the same way I do it now. And I could hide what I didn't like. But I'm going to put up some pictures of myself with no makeup on. And I think you will agree that you can see why I wanted it. I'm gonna put up some pictures with no makeup on before and after. I still have um, redness and stuff with no makeup on. But anyway, I'm gonna jump right into this and I'm gonna just kind of tell you what it was like, um, what I like about it, what I didn't, was it what I expected, pain level, price, and I'm just gonna just chat with y'all about it. Okay, first I'll tell y'all everything I had done. I had an upper and lower blepharoplasty. I had CO2, pretty major laser under my eyes. You can still see it when I don't have makeup on, like the redness and it's still a little bit scabby and it's been two months. Um, and then I had halo all over my face, which is, it's like deeper layers. It heats up deeper layers and it resurfaces. Of the things I had done, I would definitely do the blepharoplasty, upper and lower, again, in a heartbeat. I would have the CO2. I would not have, I don't think I would have the halo again, but I might. I do think I got a little tightening with it, but I'm so tired of spending money on lasers, y'all. I'm so tired because I've done skin tight, sight on skin tight. I'll link my videos down below. And I got a real good result with that, but it is subtle and it is constant throwing the money at it. Constantly, constantly to keep your face lifted up. And I'm tired of that. I would rather just go to the surgeon. That's why I finally went because I'm tired of throwing money at, I don't get Botox anymore and I don't get fillers anymore. So all I was having done was laser, but that's like $3,000 for a session of five. Well, it lasts a year and I would just rather just go save your money, go to the plastic surgeon and just get the big guns. So I don't think I would have the halo again, even though it did lift, it did lift. I don't want a facelift anymore. And I did want a facelift. So it does work. You know, if you don't want to go for the surgery, you just want to do the laser. I feel like the, ha the halo lifted my face for sure. Okay, next, um, cost. I paid 9,000 total and two of that was for halo. I'm thinking 2,000 was for the CO2 and about 5,000 for the upper and lower bluff. That is a, kind of a ballpark because it was all mixed together. But it was around 5,000 for the upper lower bluff, I believe, between five and six. And then the CO2 was probably 1,500 to 2,000. And that's gonna vary, you know, depending where you are. I am going to link my doctor's website down below because I loved him. It was Dr. Bogdan out of South Lake, and he and his staff were amazing. I loved them. They were very, he's cautious, and he is conservative, very conservative. When I went in to get my, to meet with him, to have a consult, I had to drive five hours. Well, we flew there, and when I walked in, I had been wanting to do a facelift too. And he said, you're not ready. We need to wait till you pop a band on your neck so we can lift your muscles because then you're lifting the whole thing. 
He said, when you just lift skin and you do it too early, you end up with that joker look where it pulls the skin tight, you know, up at the corners of your mouth. I've seen that. And um, when I walked in, he said, I'm not sure about your eyes now. And I said, no, that's makeup. And he said, take, take your makeup off. And I took my makeup off and he said, okay, I see what you're talking about. So if you can't see that I've had anything done, it's because of makeup. He couldn't see it either. But when I took my makeup off, and you'll see in the pictures, you could really tell. I will tell you my favorite, I'm just going to go ahead and tell y'all my favorite things about it. What, how my eyes were before, they're uneven. My eyebrows sit, this is a little bit lower than this one. He said, that's the difference I was seeing. So this was always my stepchild, my eye that I always hated and I would be doing drawing on my eyelid. Now I don't have to do that. I can just do my eyeshadow and it's just... I love it so much. So it's hard for me to tell which one is my good eye and which one's my bad. This one still has more lid space, but I don't hate this one like I used to hate it. And then my good eye, this one, he took about 10 years or 15 years off this eye. It looks like in my early 20s when I just, I had no extra skin, except something that I would change is on this inner I still have a little extra skin on this inner, and that's really where I wanted it off. I sent him a picture of it and showed it to him, and he said, I hesitate to take that off because of the mobility of your eye. And so, you know, I'm going to wait a couple of years, and then I will probably have that inner done. But I don't want to chase perfection either, you know, where you're just chasing perfection because I love it. So he took about 15 years off this eye, and this eye's never been this good. Never. Where, you know, I have eyelid all the way across, and I don't have to use the NYX Jumbo Stick anymore to paint on my eyelid. I will tell you something I'm shocked that I love so much. And someone asked me on my empties video, they said, did it get rid of your dark, can it get rid of dark circles? I think it depends on what caused your dark circles. I can't tell y'all how much I love the lower bluff. It totally got rid of my dark circles because those were just shadows from puffiness. So on mine, he went on the inside of my eye and cut on the inside, took puffiness and I guess stitched it. And then out here, I have some scars out here that are pretty thick. I feel like he lifted my outer eye because it goes up now. I didn't get a facelift, but this, the edges of my eye go up. I think that he pulled this up because now when I do my eyeliner out right here, I don't have to pull anything up out here. It's all gone. All that skin is gone and that my outer eye goes up. The nurse told me, when, because I really didn't care about the lower. I was like, I don't care about the lower. And he kept saying, you're going to love it. And I just didn't really think it was that bad because I was always focused on the upper. The lower, I used to layer so much concealer. So it's probably not that much different to y'all. Different, yeah, different to y'all. But I put on concealer in the morning, no color corrector. I put my powder on. I never touch it up. It is always perfect. This is like the rest of my skin everywhere. It just flows down into it. And the nurse told me your lower bluff is like a tummy tuck for your under eyes. So whatever he does, I don't know if every doctor does it, but highly recommend him for the whole, the whole thing. But I, I can't believe how much I love that lower. The CO2, love that. I will tell you right after I had that and I was healing, I would smile and I would have weird deep lines that were kind of like, it went like that and it looked puffy and creased. That was just puffiness. So if you have that done, you know, you can expect that the, um, the healing time on that was pretty long and it's still healing. I'm going to put some pictures up. I'm still red. I'm still red, but you can hardly see my scars. I mean, his stitching work was beautiful. Okay, pain. It looks a lot scarier than it feels. There was zero pain. 
I never had pain with it, not leaving. My husband was freaked out because they put a skin sheet, a skincare sheet, like a mask. So you look like Jason from Halloween and you're bleeding. Like it was blood running down the mask. And I'm like, what? He's so freaking out, calling my niece. So it looks a lot scarier than it is, but I have zero pain. Um, he prescribed me beforehand a lot of antibiotics, like three antibiotics. I had blood work run, um, antibiotics. Then for after, um, you have painkillers and anti-anxiety medication. And that, I think more than anything, well, because you are stressed. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But um, also to keep you down. Because I tell you the scariest, let's go on to fear. <laughs> we'll go on to fear. Somebody asked me, were you scared? I was terrified for months before because he was just kind of being lighthearted with me. But when I said, how long till I can go to the gym? And he was like, no. He said, I'm going to keep you in Fort Worth for at least a week because you're going to feel like you can do more than you can. He said that when I was talking about a facelift, but also for the eyes. He said, you can go blind. Like he wanted me to know the seriousness of it. Y'all, that stuck and I was scared to death of going blind. Well, when I went back in and then I had to sign papers saying a small percentage of people go blind. So when I went in for my surgery, he said, are you excited? And I said, no, I'm scared. And he said, why are you scared? And I said, I don't want to go blind. And he said, I will tell you, I've never had anyone go blind. He said, the thing is, I want you to be careful with your lower eyes because you have a stitch inside. So just know there are risks with it. It's the lower. If you have a stitch on the inside, if you put pressure on it, if you... Um, work out, if you bend over, you don't want to pull that stitch. It could start bleeding and that's what can lead to blindness. So I was terrified. I was waking up in the night, praying over it, slammed the door if I'm not supposed to do this. I was terrified. And also a risk is dry eye. Well, if you followed me, you know I have suffered severely with dry eye. So that kind of gave me pause, but I was like, I'm just going to do it. And, you know, I can only speak for myself. I'm so glad I did because I love everything about it. I love everything about it. And the only thing I would change is this inner that has a little bit of extra skin. And, you know, I need that to move my eye. But the rest of it, when I close my eyes, I can feel it pull. Like he took, I had told him I want all the skin gone. And he did that. I mean, I can close my eyes, but there's no excess on my eyes at all so okay um something that did happen though scared me pretty bad is after you will have or i had some severe dry eye and i thought well i did it <laughs> i've ruined my eyes but it's temporary it was for me it was temporary for me he told me to get lacrolube refresh and this is petroleum jelly feeling this is, feels like petroleum jelly. And every night you just, you know, tap it on your eye and then work it around and blink. And you cannot see with it. Like I couldn't even read with it. Sometimes I could read with it, but sometimes not. And then in the morning, it's still there. Your eyes are messy, but you wipe it off with a warm cloth, you know, and good to go. And then during the day, I used the liquid MSM drops after I was released, after three weeks, I started using this. So I didn't use anything. He, it, nothing. If he hadn't given it to me, I used nothing until three weeks out. I used the Lacrolube and then they approved my Zydra drops. I used my Zydra and at three weeks, I started using this and it helped so much. I would say I had it at the end of July. I would say the healing took a full month to a month and a half and I'm still healing, still healing under my eyes. They didn't let me wear makeup for two weeks. And then I was so scared of popping that inner stitch down here that I was terrified to put on concealer and mess with that. And it still felt so swollen. 
So I was very conservative with my makeup for a good three weeks. Couldn't wear my contacts for two weeks. So, you know, you gotta get, you gotta have a chunk of time. Okay, recovery time was two weeks no makeup, two weeks no workouts. And they called me every time I reached a milestone. They call you after your surgery, my doctor did, you know, how are you doing? They call the next day. They talk to whoever's going to be caring for you. You are in charge of her medication. They called me a couple of days after and said, it's shower day. This is how we want you to do that. And then at two weeks, how are you feeling? You can now start light cardio. I was already going to closings, <laughs> real estate closings. And I was like, I bet they wouldn't like that. I think they still wanted me pretty low key but they at two weeks you can start cardio light and then at three weeks i think but check with your doctor you can start weights i started that so slow because again that lower you don't want to pop a stitch um you are swollen for a long time and i'm i still have swelling i just sent my six week pictures and he said you are still swollen we don't want to do anything up here with this inner until we all that swelling is gone and we can see where it's settling out and it is you know in the morning it's a little puffy in here but by nighttime i'm like don't even worry about it just leave it um what i love i love it all i love i love it all and i think i even love the halo because i really wanted a facelift bad and now i really don't what I would change? Nothing, except I will tell you, tell them exactly what you want. Because like I wanted somebody that was very conservative, but I wanted plenty taken off my eyelid. But I should have said, be sure and get this inner that really bothers me. And he would, he would have taken it. But he got all of this skin out here and most of this. Um, but I would just say, tell your doctor exactly what you want and then he will tell you if you're being realistic or not. Mine does. He's like, those aren't your eyelids. I can't do that with you. But you're going to love your result. Things to have on hand. The Lacra Lube. That this, oh, I craved this. It just feels so good on your eyes. I also used my castor oil after I reached three weeks. But again, I didn't put anything in my eyes that he didn't tell me I could. But if you're on Zydra or any of those dry eye drops, he let me take mine. He let me have those. Have gentle toners because you're not going to want anything that's drying out this area. So mine were, hold on, I'm going to get it. Okay, my gentle toners, I went through a Rose Thayer's, a Thayer's in the Rose scent was lovely it's over in my empties then y'all okay this essence i think i heard about this on pensmith a long time ago and it was just sitting in my bathroom this secret key that's supposed to be like the sk2 that's just crazy expensive this is supposed to be a dupe i think the ingredients are pretty exact so i'm using this as a toner still and this is so nice and gentle and i love it and then when I'm out of this one, I'm going to be using this Clarins. And this is a lotion toner, extra comfort toning lotion. And I love the smell of this. And I remember it leaves a, like a moisture. Oh my gosh, I'm going to use this tonight. It leaves a moisture behind on your face, just slick and kind of like aloe. It feels like a little bit like aloe on your skin. Okay, this next one, this is Plastic Surgery in Laser 101. The Aquaphor. You have to have the Aquaphor with you. This felt so good and really helped with my healing. I did this for probably a, a little over a month. I would do this every night. Okay, what else? If you are packing, you will want to take leggings and very comfortable clothes. And I didn't take anything except workout tops because I live in my workout tops and I thought oh yeah I'll just want to lounge in those once we got there she said wear button downs you don't want anything you're pulling over your head and so Mark went to Chico's and got me the cutest little button downs and I love these so much I wear them in my everyday life now but I lived in those the whole time we were there so okay I'm going to go over a couple of the questions that y'all asked me Oh my gosh, I am so thinking about this, so scared of 
of scarring and changing my eye shape. Would love to hear all about your experience. And I've already talked about the scarring. It's minimal. This out here, it feels pretty thick, but my makeup covers it. And it will end up being, it's going down. But it felt pretty thick, but nobody ever noticed it because your eye makeup covers it. And I think that was pretty crucial because he came out, you know, it wasn't just in my eye. It was out here. And again, that pulled my eye up like almost cat, almost cat eye, where I don't have to draw that anymore. Um, and changing the eye shape, it did change my eye shape and I didn't really like it at first, but now it's relaxing in. I felt like it was too cat, too up. And now I'm taking my eyeliner out, but it did take just that. I, I really think it took 10 to 15 years off of the shape of my skin around this area. Okay, um, this is my number one wish list surgery. Question, did you go to an eye surgeon or a general plastic surgeon? I went to a general plastic surgeon and he, I looked at his education. I looked at his education, I looked at his residency and he was educated at Stanford and then did his residency in Manhattan, I believe. And I loved that. And then, y'all, I was looking on his website and my kid's first grade teacher from Fort Worth was on his website. So I called her and I said, did you like him? And she said, call me. So I called her. She was a beautiful woman, when, you know, 20 years ago. She said, I loved everything about it. There was no pain, you know, exactly my experience. But what's funny is about the time she had it done, I saw her on Facebook and I asked my husband, did she have something done? And Mark looked at her and said, yeah, she looks as good as her daughters and her daughters are gorgeous. Did you have the procedure because of under eye bags or because of dark circles? I struggle with hereditary under eye bags. Yeah, I had never struggled with dark circles or bags until the last year and a half. I started being like, where did those come from? It was just all of a sudden. I'm feeling like that's gonna be how my neck is. He said, wait till you pop a band on your neck and then we'll lift it up. I felt like that's what my eyes did. I felt like something just popped and they just relaxed under there. And he took that all away. I mean, and it's immediate. Even with the swelling, it just looks like this skin goes straight into this skin. You don't okay, excited about your eye video, some questions. What was the deciding factor? What was my deciding factor? Oh, when I did my taxes and I had spent $12,000 on makeup in a year and I thought I could have had my eyes done and a facelift. So I wanted to do them both. I had the money saved up to do the facelift and the eyes. And then when I sent the pictures, he said, I am not doing a facelift on you yet. And that's not a humble brag. I still felt like I needed it. And he said, I would have gotten some improvement from it, but he said, I just think, you know, you're you're going to get your money if we wait a couple of years. And the halo did work. That was really the deciding factor. I thought, quit spending money on makeup and go get what you've wanted to have done since your 20s. I've wanted this done since I was 22. Since I realized what bothered me about my face. It was this, I was so hooded, so much more than this one. And, you know, there's still a difference, but it made me really like this eye. Like if they were both like this one now, I would still be happy. I did research multiple doctors, and there are several really good ones in Dallas. Um, Dr. Rorich, R uh, I'll put it up here. Rorich, he's amazing. <laughs> That's just my opinion. I know people that have used him. He's amazing, and honestly, I didn't use him because my doctor made it so easy for me to use him. Hold on. Dr. Bogdan made it so easy. He he would let me meet with him by pictures and on the phone. And Dr. Rorich might have, but Dr. Bogdan was an hour to an hour and a half closer as well. And now I will use Dr. Bogdan for everything I do. If I eventually want my forehead done, my face, whatever I have done, I'll, I will go to Dr. Bogdan. Does it remove crepiness? Yes, because it removes all that skin removes all that skin. I still have smile lines. 
I don't know if you can see, I'll put pictures. But it does, it removes, it removed all my crepiness because all my skin's gone up there. It, it literally takes your eyes back to when you're 25, you know, where they're just, they're perfect. There's no skin up there. So there's nothing to crepe. All right, and I think that is all of my questions and all the information for you. I'm gonna link Dr. Bogdan's website down below. And um, after this, I will put up my before and afters. I'll put up several befores and then the afters. And you'll be able to see the hooding and the puffiness. Yeah, you'll see it all. <laughs> and then I'll put up some afters right after those. So anyway, DM me, email me. If you have any questions, I would be glad to, you know, talk to you as you go through this process if you want to have it done. So anyway, that is all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Leave comments and questions down below and I'll talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a good day. Bye.